Hello everyone, Helen here. It's lovely to have you here with me and a special welcome if you are a new subscriber. I've never ever had a big influx of new subscribers, just always just a little trickle of, of new people, So, but it, I always like to say welcome. And of course, welcome back to all of you who keep coming back week after week uh, to join me and listen to my chattering about this, that and next thing. <laughs> Um, so yes, anyway, well, can you believe I, th we're at the end of January as I record this and uh, yeah, cool. I've really had a slow and gentle start to this year and that was intentional. I decided um, after really thinking about it this time last year uh, but, but that we didn't have to race into a new year knowing exactly what we were going to be doing and all your plans in place so this year I said no I'm not going to really start my year properly until we get past the end of January so I'm doing that and it's definitely a time where I, I just like to cozy down and feel like a bit a, a bit like a hibernating animal <laughs> and um, yeah I, I have less energy at this time of the year and less creative energy definitely although I've definitely been doing a lot of creative thinking, but not so much doing. And consequently, I haven't got any projects to show you just at the moment. I have finished one or two, and I will um, share that with you next time, probably. And uh, But yes, for today, I'm, I'm just going to chat to you today about, yeah, kind of about the time of year, which hopefully is interesting, not as boring as it sounds. <laughs> um yeah so yeah so here in the northern hemisphere anyway it, it's it's just this really dark time of year and I'm always reluctant to to take down all the pretty lights and sparkly things that have been around the place during Christmas and there's this tradition I don't know how far this tradition extends around the world but there's a tradition that we should definitely take down all of our Christmas decorations by the 6th of January or 12th night uh, otherwise you'll have bad luck and it's definitely something that's been drummed into me since I was a child everything had to come down by the 6th of January and um, yeah uh, well, I know some people like to kind of clear away all of the Christmas paraphernalia and have their house nice and kind of back to normal, really. So, and I understand that, but, oh, I don't know. I just don't like taking down all the lights when it's so dark so early in the day, you know, it's still, you know, before tea time, it's, uh, it's, it's dark. And yeah, so... So we discovered not so very long ago that this this idea of it being bad luck to keep your decorations up after the 6th of January only really um, came in in the 19th century. And for hundreds of years before that, uh, you know, from medieval times, the Christmas season lasted all through January until the 2nd of February. And so, yeah, so I thought about that and... Uh, hmm. Yes, maybe I don't need to follow this 19th century tradition. Uh, but anyway, I, I came across a poem in, in while I was busy researching all of this, uh, which was written in the early 17th century, and which, it, it, well, it gives us a really good clue that they, uh, they thought it was bad luck to leave your Christmas decorations up after the 2nd of February, or after the 1st of February actually, Candlemas Eve, 2nd of February, Candlemas, and 1st of February was Candlemas Eve. So I thought I'd read you this poem. Ceremony upon Candlemas Eve by Robert Herrick. Down with rosemary and so, down with the bays and mistletoe, down with holly, ivy, all, wherewith ye dressed the Christmas hall, that so the superstitious find no one least branch there left behind. For look, how many leaves there be neglected there, maids trust to me, so many goblins you shall see. 
And so, yeah, people thought that if you left any trace at all of your Christmas decorations, all of the uh, the holly and mistletoe and ivy that you brought into the house, if you left any trace of it at all, then the goblins would appear and you definitely would not have a good year. Uh, so I decided that I wasn't going to take down my Christmas tree and it is it is still up, about to be taken down. I'm taking it down on the 1st of February. Uh, it's not so much a Christmas tree anymore. I've taken down all of the other Christmassy things in the house, I have to say. There's no cards about or, or anything. Uh, and, and the Christmas tree has actually become a winter tree because I decided to take off all the really properly Christmassy things like Santas and stockings and that kind of thing and just have wintry things on the tree. So I've got crocheted snowflakes and pom-pom snowballs and some knitted snowmen and one or two other things that I allowed to stay on as well. Uh, I decided reindeer aren't just for Christmas, are they? Or gnomes. <laughs> so and um, we are really, we've been really happy having that uh, lovely light corner of our room uh, th throughout January. So yeah, really nice. Candlemas, which I just mentioned a short while ago, uh, is actually the halfway point between the winter solstice and the spring equinox. So 2nd of February is exactly halfway between. And so it, it's the point in the year where you just begin to notice that the days are lengthening. And in, in lots of... Um, Christian churches, uh, Candlemas is the day that they celebrate when Mary and Joseph took baby Jesus to the temple. And uh, also some churches uh, have a ceremony where they bless all of the candles that are going to be used in the year ahead. There's a bit of uh, weather law that goes like this. If Candlemas be fair and bright, Winter will have another fight. If Candlemas brings cloud and rain, winter will not come again. I've no idea if there's any truth in that, but I did, in the course of my research, <laughs> come across uh, the fact that in America, in Pennsylvania, uh, they have Groundhog Day. And the story that they have is that if the groundhog sees his shadow on the 2nd of February, then winter will continue for another six weeks. But if he goes out and there's no shadow because it's all overcast, cloudy, um, then spring will be early. So it's really interesting that those two stories, and there are other similar stories that I've come across. Um, there's an Irish uh, story as well, which is a very similar thing, um, uh, which I'm not gonna go into right now, but uh, yes. Um, in pre-Christian times, uh, people also celebrated around the 1st, of 1st and 2nd of February and they had the Festival of Returning Light and uh, this is often called Imbolc and they had all kinds of festivities, bonfires and lanterns and things like that. And Central to their festivities is the Celtic goddess Brigid, who represents all sorts of things, including fertility and, very interesting to me, poetry and crafts. So, yeah, um, and there are lots of stories around her as well. And, and really the, the whole uh, idea behind the Imbolc celebrations is just celebrating that glimmer of hope that spring is on the way and that um, we still have to be patient though to see the end of winter. And when I was browsing on Etsy recently, uh, I was just looking for some greetings cards. I came across this lovely book um, called Lunar Moon Hair, uh, which was seemed very appropriate to you know what, what I've been talking about today and it's the story of uh, this hare who basically goes on a journey through all of the seasons 
So, and right at the beginning of the story, uh, the hare is it, given a kind of a task to do. And um, I thought I would read you the part which relates to this time of the year. The, the hare has travelled, is travelling through the snowy January and then comes to a, a little underground place where he meets a young woman. Welcome, my little friend. I am Bridget. You have journeyed well and have arrived at Imbolc. This is the time when the earth is beginning to stir after her winter sleep. Deep in the ground, seeds are pushing out roots and shoots. Tiny buds appear on branches that had seemed to be dead. Snowdrops thrust up bravely through the cold ground and nod their promises of spring to the world. A pile of twigs lay on the ground. Bridget reaches up into the sky and catches a ray of sunlight. She brings it down to the twigs and instantly a crackling, warming fire springs into life. Your hopes and dreams are like sunbeams, she says. Catch them, believe in them, and they will bring light and growth to the world. Luna glows by the warmth of Bridget's fire. She hears her whisper, Hold on to your dreams. They are as precious as the promise of spring. And it really is a very beautiful book. It's written and illustrated by a lady called Wendy Andrew. And I can highly recommend it uh, for not just for children, but for adults as well. Really lovely book. So I'm going to finish today by reading you a poem that I came across about this thing called in bulk and I, I just think the words are beautiful it doesn't matter whether whatever you might celebrate at this time of the year uh, but the, the words of the poem are really beautiful and I've put them together with some hopefully <laughs> appropriate photos and uh, which you can watch uh, while I read the poem so here it is in bulk by Caroline Meller I am the dream of awakening. I am the returning of the light. I am the tough green shoot pushing up through the pavestones. I am the first kiss of sunlight on the unfurling petals of the snowdrop. I am the wind which whispers the gentle pull of home to the migratory bird. I am the drop of ice melting on the mountainside with its great dream of the ocean. I am the sap rising in the blossom tree just before it reveals its sticky buds to the sky. I am the riotous celebration humming away beneath the earth's mantle of frozen sleep. I am the rousing of the bee from its winter slumber and the soft pad of the mother wolf's paw on the snow as she prepares to birth her pups. I am hope, potential, rebirth and promise. I am the kindling breath which transforms the flicker of inspiration in your creative call into a blazing torch. Give me the silent crescent moon rising over the sea and I will build you a bridge of silver light so you can walk up and lie in it. Give me the frost-hardened wilderness and I will breathe radiant green life over it. Give me the healer, the writer, the craftsperson and the storyteller and I will replenish her essence and make her new again. I am Bridget, Bast, Inanna and Hestia. I am the fierce protectress of the sacred fire. Tonight I bestow my gifts of power and courage at the hearth of your soul, power to step out of the shadows of self-doubt and negativity which have held you in darkness for too long, power to shed all that which no longer serves you, and courage to clear your heart and mind for the dawn that awaits you. I am the time to honour your unique gifts for their true worth and to protect and nurture your creative self as you would a child. 
I am the deep longing of the spirit which refuses to be consumed by a narrative of fear and chooses instead to place itself vivaciously on the side of love. I am the stirring in your belly which knows exactly what you are capable of and that it's time the world found out. I am the fire within which will not be contained any longer. I am the quickening. I am the serpent uncoiling. I am in bulk. I am the dream of awakening. So I do hope you enjoyed that poem and all of the things I've been chatting to you about today. And uh, I will be back next week, hopefully with some projects to show you that I've been doing and uh, and for more, more chat about this and that that's been going on in my life. <laughs> so until then, take good care of yourself. Keep nice and busy and I'll see you soon. Okay then, bye.